I, I think we've all been there. I think we've all been to that place where it's like, you know, do I really want to continue doing this? And you, you get to the point where you're tempted to quit. And if that's you, I'm going to help you today. I'm going to get you back on your feet and back in the game. Because here's what I know. We absolutely need the value that is within you. So it's vitally important that you do not quit. If you're someone that's ever felt like quitting before, then this today's episode is going to really be helpful for you. Um, and I think the first thing that we got to be real clear on is it is perfectly normal. It is a normal human thing to want to give up. Like, I'm not saying it's the right thing. I'm not saying it's how you should feel. What I am saying is that it is normal to go through certain seasons of your life where you feel like, man, I don't know if I got it today. Or, or I don't know if I, I have what it takes to do this particular thing or execute on that particular goal. And I know there's a lot of talk, you know, in our society where if it almost feels like if you're not operating at a high level all the time, then something's wrong with you. But I want to let you know that's not that's not even realistic. It's not human. It's not how we how we are made. Uh, we we tend to have some ebbs and flows. And that's really why we need each other. That's why it's important for me to get on here and do something like this, because I need you to know that you are valuable that and remind you, hey, don't give up. Stay in the fight. And so if you've ever felt like ashamed because you woke up and you didn't have it today or you were in a season where it feels like, man, I, I feel like I'm going to just throw in the towel. Hopefully this helps you in knowing that you are perfectly normal. And hopefully by the time you end this video, you'll, you'll have a little more motivation or inspiration to jump back into the fight. All right. So I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my personal kind of story here because I felt the same way that you have felt from time to time and maybe even from week to week uh, because it happens. It's a normal thing. Um, and I was thinking about this, this topic as I was reviewing the show notes. Like I was, I was going through and reviewing like what are some of the topics that have had the most views or the most like intrigue from the audience. And what I found is the one that, that you all seem to like really gravitate to are the ones that were reminding you to overcome, to get back into the fight, to, to not, you know, allow your mind to, to hold you back or to overcome certain things. And so I thought, what better topic to talk about? We got 15 weeks left. Some of you may be feeling defeated, um, but what better topic to talk about than to, to remind you today not to give up? Do not give up. And I want to share some things with you here, kind of some notes that I took that I think might be important and might help you in this fight to not give up. And so I was thinking like, what are, there's like three real temptations that cause us the desire to want to give up, right? There's three things that I feel that we seasons we go through that make us want to give up. And I'm going to go through all three of those today in hopes that you can relate to one of the three and that it will remind you that you're not alone. Because if I can, if I'm coming up with these three, it's because I've went through them myself and I know people that's going through them. So if you're one of those that's going through one of these three uh, temptations to quit, I want you to know you're not alone and I want to let you know there is a solution. All right. So the first reason why or temptation why many of us you know, seem to want to quit at times. Maybe I should write this down. Here's one of the main reasons why we often are tempted to quit. All right. And the first one here is actually, let me get my pen out. For those of you who are listening, I'm going to write out these three kind of temptation uh, to quit. The first reason why many of us are often tempted to quit is due to extended growth cycles and that lovely handwriting extended growth cycles what's an extended growth cycle well let me tell you this first 
growth can be exhausting. It can become exhausting when, when it lacks or is absent of perspective. And nothing pushes us to exhaustion faster than being in a cycle of growth for too long. And I guess too long is probably not even the right word to use. I think just an extended growth period. Like, have you ever been in a situation where you, the growth that's required for you to get to the next level is taking longer than you thought it would take? I think I touched on this last week. Like, like you're, you're in this place where you thought you'd be in this area by now. You thought you'd have this success or this, this level of accomplishment by now. But you still find yourself in the same growth cycle. And you're beginning to become exhausted. This is the first level or temptation where we are tempted to quit. Because for us, when we are in this cycle of growth and we don't really have the perspective, then it seems like we're just going around in circles without any real destination within our you know, reach. And for some that may be true, for some it may be the case that you are going around in circles and there, and there is really no destination that you feel like you're going to reach. And I, and I think that's a normal thing. So if you find yourself in this extended cycle of growth and it's causing you to become exhausted and you feel like you want to quit, here's a recommendation. I recommend you gain some perspective. Now, you may say, Joshua, that's easier said than done. What do you mean gain some perspective? Can I go buy that at the Dollar Tree? No, you can't. You may, or maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe they sell a lot of good stuff at the Dollar Tree. Maybe you can. But I don't mean like just go and grab some. I mean, we need to be reminded of the importance of perspective. And some things that help us gain perspective, one of the elements, and you might, you might over, overlook this, but I'm telling you, it works. One of the best ways to gain perspective is to go serve someone else. Stop your growth cycle. Stop your striving. Stop your pursuit of whatever that thing is, happiness, accomplishment, uh, no, whatever it is. If you find yourself getting exhausted, the knees are getting heavy, the shoulders are feeling weighty, go serve someone else. Because I promise you, when you go serve someone else, it will lift your gratitude. It will cause your gratitude to rise. And this is actually something I, I, was, I was going to talk about this week. Maybe I can just kind of give you a little bit of a glimpse into this since I, I don't know if I'll touch this topic or not. But I was going to talk this week about uh, judgment and complaining. And I think it's appropriate to touch on that because when we get in that extended cycle of growth, one of the first things we end up wanting to do is to complain. And I'm with you. It is hard not to complain. When you find yourself, you feel like you're doing all the right things. You feel like you're trying to, to put in all the right you know, steps. And yet you're still not where you want to be. And so our tendency can be to complain. But here's the danger in complaining. Complaining robs you of gratitude. And when you have no gratitude, you begin to lose hope. And you're going to see this word hope as a recurring term we're going to touch on. So serve someone else to gain perspective. If you find yourself in that cycle of growth and it's extended, meaning it's taking longer than what you thought it would, and it can take years, man. If you find yourself there, go serve. Go serve. Go serve. It could be your local church. It could be uh, families in need. I got a call this week. Um, my wife and I, we, we are signed up in this. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. But it's basically like financial wealth insurance and all this kind of stuff. And one of the, the companies that we're with, they give us like a stipend of like 500 bucks each. It's crazy. And they give us that for the sole purpose. We cannot spend it on ourselves. We have to give it. When I got that call from Jamie and she was telling me about this, it's like something in my heart just like bubbled up. Like I got excited because in that moment I was going through one of those extended growth cycles where I'm thinking, 
Man, you mean to tell me I still don't have this figured out? I was getting frustrated and probably about to start complaining. Then I got that call and it reminded me, man, I now I have an opportunity. You mean I have an opportunity to go serve someone? The Christmas holiday season is coming up. You mean not? We can actually be a, a blessing to another family? I'm telling y'all, man, if you want to cut short or give yourself more endurance to, to stick out that extended growth cycle, go serve. Go serve. It'll give you the replenishing uh, uh, energy and perspective that you need to continue the race. Because remember, you're valuable. And we need the value that's inside of you. So more, more importantly, it'll give you the perspective to not quit. All right. So it's important that we uh, focus on serving. Serving is the master key to um, avoiding the temptation to quit. All right. I'm trying to get back to my notes here. The second thing here when it comes to to quitting, right, the temptation to quit. The second reason that we are most often tempted to quit. Let me see here. Second reason we are most often tempted to quit is, oh, this one right here is a big one, the comparison gap. Whoa, let's try it again. Comparison gap. Have you ever, like, have you ever looked at your life or, <laughs> or your situation and thought to yourself, Man, I wish my life was like theirs. Or here's what we do. We'll take like a situation in our life that's hard, that's challenging, and we will literally compare it to someone else's. Like we will compare our failure to the failures or lack thereof of other people. Like we'll say, man, they're not, they're not failing as much as I am. And what this causes is, is what's known as psychological anchors. There's a term that's, that's called psychological psychology and psychology is called psychological anchoring. I'll try to say that 10 times fast. And what this describes is what happens in our human mind. Our human mind, we have a tendency to over exaggerate like the first bit of information that's put in front of our faces. And a great example of this is what you see in marketing. So in marketing, what, what will happen sometimes, they'll put like, maybe you've seen this before, they'll put like a $10,000 price tag, right? They'll say this thing costs $10,000 on a normal day. But today, we're going to slice that in half or, or less than half, and we're going to give it to you at this price. Well, that technique there is called psychological anchoring. And it's what happens when we, our brain tends to, when we see that $10,000 price tag, whatever comes below that, we feel like we're getting a deal. And for those of you, this is a whole nother subject, but that's why oftentimes we're told, or you, you've heard in negotiations, you want to start high, right? You want to start above your asking price because psychologically you're anchoring them to think that they're getting a deal. So the cat's out of the bag. Now, you know, that's what that is called. But here's what happens. We do this same thing when it comes to our failures. We will literally psychologically anchor our failures to someone else's. And that's the danger, I think, most importantly, that's the danger we see in social media. That's why I think social media is, is can be. I don't think it's bad, but I think it can be a very dangerous tool if you're not careful. Because sometimes we will go through and just scroll through everybody else's life and we're looking at their lives and we're comparing our failures to theirs. And we're wondering why their failures or why no one else's failures on social media seems to be as bad as ours, seems to be as common as ours. Everybody else seems to be living a great life, going on great vacations, having a lot of money and success and this and that. And all we're doing is we're psychologically anchoring by comparison. And that comparison will lead you to quitting. 
Sometimes I'm going to go back on that growth cycle tip. The danger in the growth cycle quitting there is you might quit too soon. The danger in quitting when it comes to the comparison gap is that you may quit based on the highlights of someone else's life. When the truth is their failures could be worse than yours. They're just not posting those on social media. And that's part of one of the reasons why I share my failures in, in this platform with you all. And we laugh about it and I, you know, I make jokes about it, but I want you to see the failure. It's part of the reason why in the, in the book I wrote, the, the Mentality of Success, it's part of the reason why I talked about sitting on that couch, writing a letter to my parents and not wanting to live anymore. But that's not a comfortable thing to share. It's very vulnerable. But if I can share one of the biggest, you know, or what was almost one of the biggest failures, which is leaving this world too prematurely, if I can share that with you, then that gives you an, a positive anchor. Because then you can see if you're still breathing, you still have an opportunity. And so don't quit by way of comparison. Your life is too important. The value within you is too important. Yeah, you might find yourself in a growth cycle that is extended, but stay with it. Get perspective, serve, stay off of the comparison. Don't compare your failures to other people's. Their failures belong to them. Yours belong to you. And I think two weeks ago, we talked about failure. Go back and listen to that. It was a, it was a great, great perspective on failure. And the lies we tell ourselves. And so if you find yourself wanting to quit by comparison, I encourage you, do not compare your failures to others. Instead, anchor yourself. Anchor yourself to your potential, not your failures. See what, what you could be, where you could go, and continuously seek that and not uh, the comparison to others. All right? So that's the second temptation that we often experience to quit. All right? It's, it's, the, it's the temptation that happens from the, an extended growth cycle and then the temptation that takes place when we are, we find ourselves in a comparison. Uh, we call, I should call it, instead of a gap, it's a comparison trap. In fact, you know, I, I need to like change the name of this. It's not even, it's not a gap. <laughs> it's, it's a trap because it's, it's going to trap you into thinking that your life is so much worse than, than it actually is. And I don't know why, why, for those of you who are listening, it just decided to write trap with extra bold letters. And I'm okay with that because I, I want it to stand out. Avoid the trap. All right. Here's the third tendency we have to quit that I want you to avoid today. I'm going to help you all avoid these things today. Here's the third one. The third thing that causes us or tempts us to quit is darkness. Let me make sure. Again, this is doing that too dark. The third one is darkness. Now that sounds a bit extreme, but let me, let me expand on what I mean by darkness. This past week, my family and I, we got a chance to kind of get away, go, go to uh, a place I hadn't even know existed. I don't know if you all have ever heard of Hutchison Island, but it is a, it is a pretty cool place. Minus the freaking big lizards, bro. My goodness. I have never seen lizards that big in my life. Like they look like little dragons. I'm, I'm telling you. My wife, and you know it's hard when you're the husband. You're supposed to like keep it together. Nah, I was freaking out too. I, I was definitely freaking out. But yeah, we got a chance to go hang out. And I'm sorry for that, that, uh, <laughs> that random outburst. But we got a chance to go hang out at this place called Hutchison Island. And just spend some time away. I've been working a lot. We wanted to kind of get away and, and spend some time together with the family. And I was walking through. I got up the morning. I got up that morning early to kind of take a walk and just kind of, you know, clear my mind, kind of reset, refresh. And I found myself kind of going back to that old famous story of Peter. You all know the story in the Bible of Peter walking on water. If you're not familiar with that story, I'll give you a, a quick synopsis or summary. 
Peter and his and his co and his friends, I almost said colleagues, like they're work partners, but him and his friends, they're out on, on this boat in the middle of nowhere. And they're in, on this boat in the middle of nowhere and this storm begins to pick up. And the story goes on to say that the, the wind begin to swirl, the, the waves begin to crash against the boat and they are freaking out because they didn't expect for this storm to all of a sudden just come out of nowhere. And insert, here comes Jesus. And Jesus is walking on the water and they get afraid because they think it's a ghost. But then Peter says, hey, Jesus, if it's you, allow me to walk to you or call me to you. And so G the story goes on to uh, demonstrate or reveal that Peter gets out of the boat, steps on the water and begins to walk towards Jesus. Now, here's why I bring that up. There are, I've heard that story thousands of times because you all know faith is a huge element of my life. The Bible is where I get you know, most of, if not all my content. But I never thought about this story from the perspective of the setting. If you think about that setting, it was during times where there was no such thing as like light bulbs or, you know, light posts like we see when we're riding down the road. And so being on that boat, think about how dark it must have been on that boat. Think about what it must feel like to be in the middle of the ocean and a storm comes out of nowhere that robs all visibility and you find yourself in the dark. And here's why I say darkness is one of the things that drives quitting. What happens when darkness kind of surrounds us is we lose vision. And when we lose vision, that vision leads to uncertainty, which then leads to anxiety, which then we designate or demonstrate as fear. And I know for some of you who are listening to this and watching this, you probably have found yourself in that dark place or in that kind of dark boat in your life where you feel like because you don't have this, the vision to see, it can become a very scary place where you are. When the waves start hitting against your, your life, when, when the wind starts kind of blowing things all kind of chaotic and, and disorganized, the things that you thought would go this way, the wind seems to take them in a completely different direction. And it's in those moments that we as human beings, we check out and say, man, what is the point? Like I, I didn't like I didn't sign up for this. And I think this one this is why I left this one for last, because this one is the one that I think most people in our society. Or maybe not most, but a lot of people in our society experience. Because for a lot of us. If we're honest, we really don't know what's what's ahead. For some of us, we are. Optimistic, we look forward to, to what's in front of us. But for some of you, you've been working hard, man, working hard. And yet the light has not shined through yet. The light is still dark. And if that's you, Here's my encouragement for you today. This is why it's important. In the middle of that story, Peter had a, a, a source of hope. His source of hope was Jesus Christ, which just so happens to be my source of hope. But my question to you is, what is your source? You need to have one. Because just as sure as day and night will come, so will it be in your life. There will be days where things don't go the way you thought they should go. There will be seasons where things seem very dark and you don't have the vision and you're filled with uncertainty and, and, and anxiety tries to come and rob all the hope that you have. And it seems like there's no room for light. 
And those are the times where hope, hope becomes a lifeline. I've experienced it, and I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably have as well. And so the first step in driving out that darkness and the temptation to quit is to know where your source of hope is and to actually use that source. There's a lot of people who say where their hope is, but as soon as darkness comes, they do like, like the disciples did in that boat. They just saw it, they lose their mind. Like they, here they are, they have access to someone who has the power to allow them to walk on water and they are scared out of their minds. And the same we see is true in you. Even if we're not talking about like Jesus Christ, let's just talk about you. You have power and value and resources that are already within you. But the moment darkness comes around you, you forget and lose sight or lose a confidence in the creation, the fantastic, the phenomenal creation that is you. And I get it. Like I said at the top of this talk or episode, that's a normal human response. But what you want to train yourself to do is when you see, when you're surrounded by darkness, you turn to whatever your source of hope is. When I'm surrounded by darkness, I know I need to spend some time with the Lord. The second thing I often do and I encourage you to do is invest into yourself. Nothing drives out darkness like light. And the more you develop the values, the skills, the strength within you, understanding what your beliefs are, the more light you allow into your life. And the more you create what is known as a true north. And the less, the less chances you have of quitting. So those are the three temptations of quitting. If you didn't, if you didn't see it earlier, it's the extended growth cycles that I've seen that cause us to want to quit and give up too soon. It's the comparison trap. We call it the gap, but we change it to trap because that's what it is. That traps you into comparing your failures to other people's failures. And we talked about psychological anchoring. And then the third one is darkness. Darkness causes us to lose sight, which causes us to be uncertain, which allows the driver known as anxiety to take over our lives and I think even more so we didn't even talk about this it not only takes over our lives but it causes us to think the worst about our value and our future and so I hope this was helpful I hope this encourages you today to not quit stay in the fight know your source of hope fight for perspective go serve someone so you can increase gratitude in your life Make sure you, you stay off of the things that may tempt you to compare your failures to others. And if you do this, we will get to see the great value that is waiting to burst through you. All right. I hope this was helpful. If so, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification button so that you don't miss an opportunity to add to the value in your life. All right. If nothing else, I'll see you all right back here, same place, same time, or well, hopefully not the same time, it's been a little late today, but same place reminding you that success is your destiny. Till next time.